So Webflow just recently updated their platform. Things look entirely different. Things are in different places and there are new features. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of Webflow, show you where things are, show you how to navigate the new dashboard, the new designer. And then also I'm going to go over some really big features near the end that might help you out a lot. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So as you can see, I am in the new Webflow dashboard. Things look entirely different. Um, if you see this new logo and you're not sure if you're in Webflow, you are. They updated their logo. So uh, if you see this, you are in the right place. Uh, from here, everything is it's pretty much the exact same. It just looks a little bit different. So you should have all your sites here. I'm logged into the Fitter Media workspace. So as you can see, there are lots of sites. Uh, let me go into just a folder. This is probably similar to how your dashboard will look. Just one or two, maybe three websites. And then from here, you have your various uh, workspace settings on the side. So this is similar to all of your other settings before. It's just that now you can find them on the side. So if you have team members or uh, you, if you want to update your billing, you can do that here on the side. Now, if you want to access your site settings per website, then it's the exact same way as before. You click on these three dots and you go to settings. The settings will look a little bit different, but they pretty much haven't changed the, the navigation just a little bit different. So uh, historically, the nav bar used to be across the top where you can uh, navigate the different various parts of your site settings. But as you can see, it moved to the left hand side. So we have general settings like before. Uh, site access. I'm not going to go down through all of these because they haven't changed really, just the navigation has changed. Um, if we go to the designer now, this is where you're going to see one of the biggest changes and that's probably uh, what you're most interested in. So I'm just going to click on designer and the entire UI has changed. Things look entirely different. Things are in different places. So I'm just going to give you a quick rundown, show you where everything is and kind of give a uh, quick rundown of the entire designer so as if as in before over here you have most of your options on the left hand side on this uh, navigation bar uh, the plus up near the top is the add panel just like before so this is where you have all your elements all the elements are practically the exact same uh, just the icons look a bit different there is one new element you can add and this is a spline scene. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. Yeah, you probably won't be using it anyway, but it's just uh, a tool you can use to create 3D interactions and stuff like that. Uh, and then below that, we have the pages panel. So these are uh, pages just like as before. The UI is just a bit different. And then underneath that, we have the navigator. So this is where you can see all the elements that are on your page. So if I select this heading, you can see it shows up in the navigator. Now these three are the same down below here. This is where it kind of gets a little bit interesting. There are a few new things. So first off, we have symbols or components. Now that they're called, they're now called. Uh, these haven't changed, but underneath here, you're going to see a new thing called variables. If you click on this, you should automatically see some of your website colors. So this is where you can actually manage all of your website colors from a really easy place instead of having to manually um, uh, customize them down here so when you select an element and then you click on a color you used to have to change them here now you can change them in bulk over here in the variables tab now this is going to dive into a whole bunch of new features that they added with variables i'm not going to cover it right now stick to the end i'm going to cover it in a little bit uh, underneath that we have style selector this just shows you all of your classes you have. It used to be found over here on the right hand side uh, near settings. It's now over here on the left hand side. Uh, underneath that we have media that hasn't changed. Uh, we have the CMS that hasn't really changed either. Uh, it's the exact same way. It just looks a little bit um, different as you can see, but um, everything is still the exact same. Underneath that we have Webflow logic. Uh, underneath that we have users if you're not using these things don't worry uh, but underneath that we have underneath users we have uh, e-commerce 
And then underneath e-commerce, we have this section called apps. So if you click on this, you can see the apps that you have installed at, I believe, a workspace level. So you can see we have the Zapier integration and the Figma to, Figma to Webflow integration, but there are various apps. Um, there are some big plans for this, so you might be using this more and more. And then over here in the style selector, or style panel, everything is the exact same. There are a few settings over here that are really helpful. Again, I'm gonna cover that uh, at the end of this video. Um, but then we have the settings and the interactions. Again, those haven't changed. Uh, in terms of preview previewing your site, you can see there is no longer an eyeball up here in the top left-hand corner. The preview button has moved over to the right-hand side. It's this little play button. So if I were to click on that, we can preview the site. Uh, right beside that, we have little comments. So this is where uh, the Webflow comments is moved to. So you can comment anywhere on uh, your site. And then right here to the side, this is your share button. So it's kind of similar. It's, it's kind of in the same place. But this is where you can find your uh, read-only link or you can invite team members. And then from there, we have the publish. Nothing has really changed here. That is pretty much a quick overview of the uh, dashboard and the designer, the visual changes. Now I wanna go into some of the new features that has been added to the designer that will definitely make your life a little bit easier and are really, really helpful. So the first new feature that I wanna go over is a small one, but it is actually really helpful and you can now add image aspect ratios or really aspect ratios to any element really easily. So we actually just dropped a video the other day um, of a method on how to add image aspect ratios. It was kind of a workaround method that developers used in Webflow, but now there is a much more seamless uh, solution native in Webflow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly drop in an image and I'm going to add a random image. So we'll just add, uh, let's do a different one, that's a GIF. So we have this image right here. By default, this image is going to have the original aspect ratio that the image is in. But if we go to the style panel, go down to underneath size, down near you'll find ratio. It should be near the overflow settings, but here we can actually set a ratio. So if we click on auto, we, can, we have various aspect ratios here that we can choose from. So uh, two by one, a widescreen 16 by nine, a three by two, two by three, a square, uh, or you can do a custom. So uh, what you can do is just enter, say we want a three by two, which that's already a default option, but we're just gonna use this as an example. Uh, simply enter in three on the width and then two on the height. And now we have a perfect three by two ratio. Now you might've saw as I was scrolling through these aspect ratios that the image is pretty squashed. To fix that, all you have to do is go down to fit, click on fill, and we wanna change this to cover. And now the image is not stretched anymore. Uh, if you want to position the image to a certain side, so you can see kind of like the top is cut off. Say we wanted it to show from the top down. All you have to do is go to fit, click on these three dots, and then position the image wherever you want. So I'm gonna position it to the top center. And there we go. So setting image aspect ratios is really easy now. And it's not just limited to images. You can do it pretty much for every element. Okay, so the next new feature is called variables. I briefly touched on it a little bit earlier in the overview. But if we go to the left-hand side to this sidebar, we have this new option called variables. If we click on that, you can see by default, we have a lot of colors here. So if you're on an existing Webflow site that has uh, global colors added to it, you should see a lot of these colors and the names that you have associated with them. But we can actually add quite a few more variables to this instead of just colors. If I click on new variable up in the top right corner, you can see we have the option to add colors, size, and fonts. So let me show you how it works. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to create a custom font. So I'm gonna click on font and then it didn't do nothing. That's because it automatically adds it down here to the bottom of all your variables. 
it adds a default name and a default font. So what we're going to do is we're going to customize this. We are going to click on these settings near the name, and we're just going to name this uh, second font. We're going to click on save, and then for the font, you just click in here. We have our font selector just like before, and we are going to choose, let's just choose impact so that we can see when we make a change. So from there, we have created a variable called second font and it is set to impact. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and I'm going to change this headers font to the font we just selected. So in the style panel, I'm gonna scroll down and near font, instead of manually selecting a font here, you can see kind of like the CMS where you get these little blue, I mean little purple bubbles, there is a purple plus icon near the font. If we click on that, it shows all of our font variables. So right here we have our second font that we created. So I'm gonna select that. And you can see it perfectly changed the font. Now you might be like, well, why wouldn't we just set the impact font here? Well, if you are using this on various parts of your website for setting custom fonts here and there, you can actually globally change this font from the variables tab. So let me show you that real quick. So let's go back to the variables, go down to our font variable, and let's change the font from impact to Times New Roman. Now, if we exit out of this, you can see the font has changed perfectly. So this is a really cool way to uh, globally update things like fonts through variables. Um, this is going to impact a lot how we build style guides in Webflow websites. So I would highly recommend you getting used to it and playing around with it. Now, the next thing is sizes. You can actually set custom sizes in uh, variables. So I'm going to click uh, add a new variable and I'm this time going to add a size. So if we scroll down, you can see it automatically added that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to name this uh, container desktop. And then we're going to set the width to, let's say, a, uh, 60 REM. Hit enter. And now, if we go back to our designer, we can actually use this variable anywhere we would use spacing or a size. So, for example, we could, if we wanted to, we could set the font size to that new uh, variable we added. I wouldn't suggest it because it's massive, but we could do that as well. Or a more common use case probably for the variable I set is we could go to our container, container large, and we can set our variable container desktop to the max width. And there we go. What this is actually useful for is we can go back to our variables anytime. So let's go to our variables and we can change the width. So instead of 60 REMs, let's change this to 40 and then go back and you can see the width has changed. Okay, the th last part I want to show you about variables is colors. By default, you may think colors is the exact same as it used to be. It's just in a different place where we just set our colors here instead of setting them over here. So like when you would style an element, you could, you could uh, manage your colors over here like usual but there's actually a really cool feature with the new colors variables that you might not have been aware of so right here if you were to click on the settings for any color so I'll do this screen right here you can see we're given a CSS variable we can actually use this variable in custom code to use this color that we have set which means if we are using this color in custom code, at any time down the road, if we were to change this color on this variable, it would change the color in the custom code because we are using a variable instead of an actual color hex code. So for example, I'm gonna copy that and let's just quickly add uh, some tech, some custom code. So I quick added some custom code here just to create a simple box with a background color. You can see it is that green that we selected. But if I click in here, I'll kind of show you what we did. So we just have some styling here to set the width and the height. What I want to bring your attention to is the background color. 
So you can see we set the background color in CSS and instead of entering a hex code for the color, we entered this variable var in parentheses dash dash primary. Now, if we were to go back to our variables and we were to change the color for this variable. So let's say we'll just change it to like a blue color. Click out of this and then go back to the home page. You can see it changed the color of this background even though this was used, even though this was a custom code element because we are using that variable. So this is super, super helpful. Um, additionally, it's also super helpful because it actually just gives you the variable right here. You click on the settings and you can just copy the variable right here. It is really, really easy. It's going to help quite a bit. So that was a quick overview of the new changes that just hit Webflow the other day. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and we'd be happy to get back with you.